Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to another Team Doctor Tuesday. As promised, today we are going to take a look at Conquest. Now, I get a lot of questions about Conquest. People are new to the game, maybe don't know how to do it. So we're going to give you some tips on, on how to do all three of these first starter maps. Now, this first map, the starter map, is a great start for anybody who has never done Conquest before. Now, Conquest takes a little bit of strategy from Risk, takes kind of the same uh, reinforcement aspects, but they throw in some, some different things as well. The first tip that I have for Conquest is when you're starting out, grab as many territories as you can as soon as the map starts. Now, the reason why we wanna grab as many territories as we can is because you'll see how many reinforcements you get uh, depending on the amount of territories that you get so if we skipped to the uh, to the reinforcement stage right here you would see that I would only have one reinforcement to give with five territories that I have currently now if we were to go ahead and restart this this conquest and start from the very beginning here grab as many territories as we can doesn't matter what pattern we go into, then we go into the reinforcement rate. You see, instead of only one person, we're going to get three. Now, in this map, it's very easy to expand quickly. You have a decent amount of guys to start with. So starting off isn't that much of a problem. When we go to a different map, however, it, it may become a problem. Doesn't matter. The same principle still applies. You want to get as many territories as you physically can the first one or two rounds. And I just want to show that this also applies to the first inning map. As you can see, with five territories, you only get one person. And if we were going to restart this again, expand as quickly as we can this time as well. Reinforce. Boom. Instead of only getting one, we're going to get four people to reinforce with. Now, I will admit, if you've never played this, this may seem a little complicated. It may seem complex. So what we'll do is we're going to restart this one more time. And we will take a look at each stage, and I will explain each stage. First stage right here, pretty simple. That's the attack. That's where if you have... Uh, any territories you're able to go and attack right the computer just was able to take my territories out through them attacking me now when we get in the situation like this where we're able to attack you can do two things as you can see on the right you can play the game there are various difficulties depending on your team that you have you attack you use the team that you have set up whatever team you have that's the team that you're going to use during the attack let's say that you have a team like this you watched my last video you got Gallo you got Olsen and you're ready to you know start conquest after watching this video and you feel confident right if you have this a team like this and you feel like hey I'm not sure if I can beat the computer on Legend, or, or I'm not sure if I can beat the computer on this difficulty, right? The cool thing about Conquest is the more people in your territory that you're attacking with, the lower the difficulty you're able to attack with. So if we take this map, which I have pretty much halfway done here, and we go ahead and attack the Hub Stronghold, right, with 72 million fans, you can see I can play the game on any of the five difficulties that are available right there. So if we were to attack this Cub Stronghold with only th two fans, and they have 14 million fans, we can only play that game on Legend. To me, I can win Legend more often than not against the CPU, especially when you have a really good team like this. However... It's not always an easy game. On Legend, you know, the CPU can lead off with three home runs. They can 
you know, strike you out five times in a row, whatever it is. If you if you cannot play on Legend or you can't play on Hall of Fame, the answer is simple, right? Add more people and attack then. Then you can play on whatever difficulty you're comfortable with. You can play on the easiest difficulty. You know, if you have 72 million fans and you still want to play on Legend, you can. I don't recommend that. Um, whatever difficulty you feel comfortable with, you can add more fans to the area that you're attacking with. So again, let's apply this principle right here. I could play this game on Veteran, All-Star, Hall of Fame, or Legend because I have double their fans. All right, so I actually had to skip to two more reinforced stages in order to get the difficulty on Rookie. But it doesn't matter, right? The thing about Conquest is the only limiting factor in this is time, right? Once you understand how to do Conquest, all it is is a matter of how long it's going to take you, right? It's no big deal. If you want to skip through five reinforced stages so that you have uh, it on Rookie, you don't feel comfortable playing on, on All-Star, you, you don't feel comfortable playing on Veteran even, no big deal, right? Once you understand how to do Conquest, all it is is a matter of checking the boxes in order to finish the entire Conquest, right? So that's the attack phase. Now we're going to move on to the Steel Fans stage. Pretty simple, right? What Steel Fans allow you to do, it allows you to attack any of the current people that are in the the conquest still right so i can attack the dodgers the braves the twins yankees whoever you want right let's just say we're going after st louis next so what this does is allows me to attack the cardinals and as you can see right here there are six fans that are currently defending their stronghold their stronghold is right here in the middle Right, right there, right in the middle. So if you attack there, right, we just went over the attack phase. If you were to attack, there'd be six fans, six million fans that would be guarding that plate. What you can do with the attack phase is you can remove those fans from the from their stronghold, and you actually get those fans during the next reinforced stage. So remember, when we go to the when we went through the reinforced stage the first time and we only had five territories, we got one million fan. Now, if you skip through everything again, you got to the reinforced stage, but you you went to the steel fans and you stole you know, three million fans from a team, you get your one million fans plus the three million fans extra that you that you got from the other person's stronghold. Now, in maps like this, it's not the biggest, you know, the biggest help. You don't really need a an extra two, three million fans. That's no big deal. However, when we go to the USA map, right, you can look at all of the conquests that I've done, all of the strongholds that I've taken out so far, and I definitely can tell you I stole fans on the way. It made it so much easier. What the next stage is, is the reinforced stage. We've gone over this a couple of times in this video already, but you, if you don't understand, what you do is you can click on any territory that you have and you can put the fans in there. Now, what I see a lot of people do during the reinforced stage is they reinforce every single territory. Instead of putting all the, the people in one territory like I just did, they will put you know, one here, one there, one there. So every one of my territories on the outside has two. Now, that's not a bad strategy that there's nothing wrong with doing that. However, in my opinion, it makes the map go even longer, right? Right now, if I was playing this map for the first time, what I would do here is after I reinforce, right? After this move fan stage, which I'll talk about here in a second, I would attack and continue to get as many territories as I can. Like I said, the first two rounds, I really focus on getting as many territories as I can 
That way, as time is going on, I have more reinforcements than I did that if I went right and attacked the St. Louis Cardinals um, stronghold right here. So again, after the reinforce stage, we move on to the move fan stage. This move fan stage is pretty simple. What it allows me to do is it allows me to select any, any territory that has more than one fan in it and click on another territory and move those fans to that other territory. So move the fans from this territory right here up to here. You can move one fan, you can move two fans, you can move all the fans. Every territory must have one fan in it. Go back to the attack feed. For the first two rounds, I try to grab up as much territory as I can. And honestly, with how little territory the CPU took, I would definitely uh, I would definitely go back to the reinforce stage and take even more territory here. And again, you don't have to worry about them attacking you because they only have one. And if they if they do attack you, at most they're going to take one, maybe two territories away from you. And with your reinforcements, you'll be able to take it back. So you're in this stage here where one away from being able to attack the St. Louis Cardinals stronghold or one away from being able to, to take the Minnesota Twins stronghold. We're only two away from taking the Cubs, two away from taking the Brewers, two away from taking the Dodgers. At this stage, whichever, whichever team you feel uh, most confident in beating, right? You can go ahead and leave that, leave that stronghold, right? Let's just say, let's just say that out of all the strongholds on the map, you're most afraid of facing the Dodgers, right? So naturally, what you should do. When the Dodgers are at this stage, they don't have a lot of um, people in their stronghold. They don't have a lot of territories. You want to go after them first. All right, so like I said, let's pretend that you're most afraid of the Dodgers. So what you're going to do is you're going to put all of your fans on the, the border that is closest to their stronghold. Now, I could have done this. I could have moved here moved up there and then attacked there without risking losing any of these guys but I don't really mind because if I'm not able to take their stronghold this turn then they'll have less reinforcements for the next turn so when you're attacking territories that aren't the stronghold this right here right simulate game is very useful right you just click simulate and what it does is it randomly attacks and if you have more fans than the other team most of the time, you'll win pretty handily. Now, you might lose a fan or two. That's okay, uh, as long as you win. And what they just did is they attacked my guys, so I went from six to five. Right, so again, let's just say that you're most afraid of the Dodgers, but you feel confident that you can beat them on All-Star. That's great. The biggest tip that I have when doing these games against the CPU, and this is very important, Whatever starting pitcher you choose, right? If you choose your number one starting pitcher, you are going to face the Dodgers' number one starting pitcher. If you face, uh, if you pick your number two, if I pick Greg Maddox here, we're gonna be going against Clayton Kershaw. But the good thing about that is, if I go down here and I pick my fifth starter, my fifth starting pitcher, their fifth starter will pitch the game. Right, so if you go against a team like uh, like the New York Mets, for example, the New York Mets have two very very strong starting pitchers. Right, they have Jacob Degrom and Noah Syndergaard as their one and two starting pitchers. If you don't feel confident, if you don't feel confident with with facing them. You don't. You don't have to face them. You can pick your number four. You can pick your number five. Right. What I've been doing in a lot of these conquest games is I've been picking Shoei Otani because I feel confident in facing all the teams in the league, their number four starters, as well as I get Otani as a bat. So I don't even have to pinch hit for him if I do well in the game. Now, what's important to note 
is that if you pick one of your relief pitchers, they don't start one of their relief pitchers. They are going to start a random starter. Their one through five starter, whatever starting pitching, whatever starting pitcher it lands on, whatever the wheel like we had in 19 lands on, for them, that's what starting pitcher they use. So if you're afraid of facing their number one starting pitcher, you can pick whatever pitcher you're comfortable with facing. All right, the last thing that I want to do before I show off my team is take a look at teams that you guys sent me. I had a, I had a fair amount of teams that you guys sent me for the YouTube videos, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight two teams that I think are at two different stages and show you how to improve them. Now, when people send me teams, there are three things that I look at. The very first thing that I look at is the lineup, right? So let's go ahead and take a look at Corey's lineup right here. He has a switch hitter followed by three right-handed batters, a left-handed batter, two switch hitters, a right-handed batter, and then the pitcher, right? No offense to Jack Flaherty or any pitcher in the game, but there's pretty much only two or three pitchers in the entire league that can actually hit well. Right, hit consistently. Jack Flaherty is not one of them, and none of the other pitchers that Corey has in the bullpen uh, are particularly good at hitting either. So you don't want to do what Corey's doing with his lineup right here, and that's having three righties in a row. Now, the reason you don't want to have three righties in a row or two righties and then potentially your pitcher in a row is because if you play in ranked seasons, that's a full nine inning game. Your pitcher is going to have to bat at least at least once or else your bullpen is going to be gassed for the next game, right? So if you have three righties in a row or three righties and then your pitcher in a row, what I will do as, as a smart manager when it comes to baseball is I'm going to bring in a right-handed relief pitcher, especially with the new rules, and face your three righty batters in a row, and there's not a single thing that you can do about it because unless you're going to sub out three three righties or you're going to sub out Gene Carlos Stanton there in the middle, right? there's nothing that you can do about it except for try to get a hit you know, against the same side arm that your, that your batter is. Right, So what I would do with this lineup is I would go with the switch hitter, a right-handed batter, a lefty, or a switch hitter, right? Stagger it. Go righty, lefty, righty, lefty, righty, lefty, or switch, lefty, righty, whatever it is, whatever your lineup that you're watching right now is, right? Try to avoid having three of the same handed batter in a row. Obviously, you can have two switch hitters in a row. You can have a righty, a lefty, a switch hitter in a row. That's not a problem. But if you have more than two batters that are lefty or righty in a row, then you have to mix it up. And Corey has four righties and four lefties slash switch hitters in his lineup to be able to stagger the four and four so that they don't have to be back to back. So let's take a look at Corey's lineup after he showed me this team on stream and we were able to improve it. All right, so as you can see, regardless of even changing the, the players that Corey has on his team, we were able to um, improve his team just by fixing the lineup. Now, somebody like me isn't going to be able to bring in Dellen Batances and face and Dalton Simmons, Gene Carlos Stanton, and Fernando Tatis in a row. Now I have to think about it. I have to look at you know their righty and lefty stats and say, okay, Yasmani Grandal is a beast. He's a switch hitter, but he doesn't hit lefties as well as whatever. And Dalton Simmons isn't whatever, right? It requires more strategy from your opponent if you avoid having more than two righties or more than two lefties in a row in your lineup. Now, taking a look at the actual players that he has, there are definite improvements that we could make. First and foremost, first and foremost, we can improve the the overall of this team by getting a few of the face of the franchise cards, right? 
He has Fernando Tatis Jr., right? So we're not going to tell him to grind for the face of the franchise yet, right? But he doesn't have a day-to-day second baseman. He could easily go after Ozzy Albee's face of the franchise, right? He could go after face of the franchise Joey Gallo, face of the franchise um, Matt Olson here, right? Those three players that we just suggested are going to drastically change how his lineup looks. That Miguel Sano card, if you can hit with, is a very good card. However, it is still a silver card, and there are potentially better third basemen out there, right? Brooks Robinson is a very good defensive third baseman, right? Maybe he doesn't give you the best offense, right? We're going to take a look at that in a second, right? So again, the second thing that we're looking at here is the actual cards on the team. First is the lineup. Second is the actual cards, right, which we just suggested uh, a way to do it. And the third thing that we that I look at is if you have a catcher on the bench or not. Now, why, why do you need a catcher on the bench, right? Yasmani Grandal, as many of us know, is one of the absolute slowest players in the game. Let's say Yasmani Grandal is on third base, one out, bottom of the ninth, it's a tie game, you're losing, you need to tie the game up. Would you rather have somebody like Dansby Swanson on third base where a sack fly can hit him in, or somebody like Dan, uh, like Yasmani Grandal with pretty much zero speed potentially scoring from a sack fly, right? You want to have a catcher on your bench, so worst case scenario, you can you know pinch run for him and, and tie up the game, win the game, you know, you don't you don't win the game. You can put your backup catcher in without having to put, you know, Eddie Murray who can't play catcher at catcher. The only catcher in the game right now that I could say you could potentially get away with it is JT or JT Real Muto. Obviously Real Muto is the fastest catcher in the league and you could get away with his great defense and great speed on the base paths. But even then, you know, there could be a situation, let's say you have the 95 Ricky Henderson, where you would much rather have Henderson on the base paths than Real Muto. So three, that's the third thing that I recommend, right? First, make sure your lineup doesn't have three of the same arm or same batting uh, side in a row. Two, right, make sure that you're putting out the best team composition that you can and three try to make sure that you have a catcher on the bench now let's take a look at Corey's pitchers here Corey has a fairly decent bullpen and a fairly decent starting rotation now I say decent because obviously there are improvements that we can make right the three face the franchise pitchers absolutely could do well here right Snell Otani and Aaron Nola are all better than Eovaldi, Tanaka, and Saberhagen, Saberhagen or Clevenger. Right? Corey is an Indians fan, so maybe he wants to keep Clevenger and put those three face of the franchise cards. Either way, there's still an improvement. And bullpen right now, today, as you're watching this video, there is a brand new Kerry Wood that is out. We'll take a look at him here in a second. That you could definitely pick up to improve your bullpen. Now, I don't recommend grinding for any bullpen cards right now other than that carry wood because right now bullpen is the weakest weakest position in the game. Outside of the few live series diamonds, outside of the few collections cards, outside of the Evolution Eckersley and Mariano Rivera, there really aren't many options at bullpen. Right, so having a gold bullpen right now with maybe a diamond or two splashed in is not the worst. So let's take a look at this Kerry Wood card. So this Kerry Wood card is a relief pitcher, which is very good. He's got a very good slurve, a good four seam, a good curve, and a good cutter. Pretty good pitch selection, especially for a free bullpen card that's a diamond. I'm going to be getting this card probably on stream today. Um, as you can see, location, you can only get him from the player program. If you're having trouble finding him, you click on programs, player programs, go down to this carry wood. Now, there are a few ways that you can get him, 
right? You have to achieve 50 of the evolution slash pro player program points, right? So you can get 10 by striking out people online with relief pitchers, right? If you tally a save with a Cubs pitcher, you get an additional 10. You can exchange relief pitchers, which I don't recommend doing right now unless you, you know, have a, a lot of cards to spare. Or you can play against the CPU on uh, All-Star against the Cubs and beat them. You get 8 points for that. So that's 8 points plus 7, 7, 7. That's 21. That's 29 points plus 9. That's 38 plus 12 is 50. So if you do all of the moments and you play the CPU, uh, the Cubs on All-Star and you win... That's what you have to do to get them. You beat the, the CPU, you beat all the moments, boom, you have this carry wood as well as uh, a few of the Cubs packs. In addition to 15, we go to the first inning program. He also counts as a collection to get 20 stars. Now I'm trying to get to a thousand stars. I'm sure many of you are. You get a bunch of great stuff with that, a bunch of packs. Very good. No reason not to get it. Right, so that that Harry Wood card not only improves teams like Corey's, maybe teams like yours, but it also gets you stars to continue to improve your team. All right, the second and last team that we're going to look at for this uh, for this video is Max. Max has been a moderator and a follower of my channel for a long time, and he has finally taken my advice so I can show you guys what teams would look like if you have a lot of face the franchise cards as you can see by the actual cards on his team he has very good cards right trey mancini pretty decent josh bell's a beast moncada's a beast joey gallo's a beast he obviously hit a high enough level to get gary sanchez and if you guys peek in his lineup he also got a high enough uh level to get Corey kluber he is what I would say is the next stage. I would say Corey's team was in the first stage of no money spent grinding, right? Getting your team filled with golds and silvers, getting uh, a few diamonds in there. Max is in the next stage. He's grinded the face of the franchise cards. He's built up his bench pretty well. He's got a few diamonds uh, on the bench or one diamond on the bench, a few high golds on the bench, a backup catcher. He's looking good, right? The one area that I think Max's team struggles here is the pitching, right? Once you once you get a pretty good uh, starting position team, right? You want to focus on your pitchers, right? Those three starting pitchers that I talked about earlier definitely could improve this team, as well as the new Carry Wood. And honestly, if Max is able to grind hard enough, I think that we can start improving. I think that we can start improving the position players here, right? I know he's going for Fernando Tatis, he told me, right? But I think that the Trey Mancini, while it's a great card, while the Whit Merrifield is a great card, while the Steve Finley is a great card, we can start spending some stubs that he gets from either flipping cards or um, getting from these team affinities to actually buying cards to improve. I think that the Aaron Judge card would be a great right fielder if you don't feel like getting the Matt Olson card. I feel like the um, you know Acuna for about fifty to 60,000 stubs could be a great center fielder. Gives you great speed, great power, right? This is where once your team is in this stage, you can focus on improving your team or doing collections. We'll talk about collections in next week's video. I, I think I want to give you guys some tips in addition to flipping cards again next week for completing some of the collections. But Max is definitely ready to finish grinding his face of the franchise cards uh, for starting pitching and start improving his team with the collections. Would like to send me your team. My PSN will be on screen at some point somewhere. And definitely add me. Let me know that you're from my, my YouTube. I'd be more than happy to take a look at your team. As always, when we're wrapping up these videos, we're going to take a look at my team. So I've done a little bit to improve my team. Uh, I luckily pulled Judge and Yelich, which I don't recommend opening packs. I always buy the headliner packs, and I open all the packs that I get from Conquest. 
I was lucky enough to pull Judge and Yelich. The clip is on my channel or on my Twitter. Uh, but our team is looking pretty good. We got Judge in center, Yelich in right, Gallo in left, Seeger not the best at third, but not bad. Correa at short. Still planning on replacing him with either Tatis uh, or Labor Torres, depending on which one has a better second uh, secondary second base position. Olsen looking great. Gary Sanchez has been great. And then taking a look at my bench here, Posey again is there as a backup catcher. Great defense. You can get him pretty cheap right now. Uh, only about 700, 800 stubs. Granderson, I grinded to get. Looking pretty great. Todd Helton, looking great. Duke Schneider's looking good. Frank Thomas, I have as a right-handed bat. Uh, I do have Drew Waters. I could potentially put there uh, Leody Tavares as well. But uh, things are looking great. My team is slowly but surely improving. I'm hoping that by next week's video, I will finish getting my team affinity uh, third baseman in Moncada. Uh, Tatis and Glaber as well. And I'm hoping, looking at my pitching, to get uh, Nola and Blake Snell. My bullpen, as I said earlier, I'm going to be getting the Kerry Wood. And I'm actually going to start some collections, which I'll go over for next week's video. I think I'm going to pick up the A's collection and uh, start picking up a few cards. But don't worry, I'll go, after, go, uh, go over that next week. But yeah, I appreciate you guys watching. I think all of our teams, from what I've seen, from what you've been sending me on Twitch, which I am live right now, twitch.tv slash strikeout1066. Come tell me to watch the YouTube video. And uh, I think we're all improving. And no money spent is going great this year. If you guys want me to cover anything, drop in my stream. Let me know what you want me to, uh, to put in next week's video. I appreciate you guys watching. And uh, have a great rest of your day.